Hello, I'm Justin Seven with SportsbookReview.com and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Kelly Criterion. Before I go into detail, I want you to think about an imaginary investment. Imagine you could bet on a coin flip. On heads, if you risked a dollar, it would pay you two dollars. And on tails, you would lose your dollar. So this sounds like a fantastic game. From a gambler's perspective, this has an expected value of 50 cents every time you risk a dollar, or a 50% EV. So how could a gambler with an edge this big possibly lose money? Very simple, by betting too much on each coin flip. Let's say you have exactly $100 to start with, and every flip you're going to risk half of your money. You bet $50 on your first flip and win, winning $100. You now have $200, you risk half of that on the next flip and lose, you're back down to $100. The order of the sequence doesn't matter. If you lose your first bet, going from 100 down to 50, and win your second bet of 25 winning 50, it takes you back to 100. So in the long term, the sequence of the wins and losses don't matter as long as you get the expected number of wins and losses, which will always happen in the long run. By betting too much on this opportunity, you've turned a profitable chance into one where you're breaking even, and if you bet more than half your money on each flip, you'd actually be losing money long term. When you have a profitable opportunity, there are four different paths that can happen to your bankroll depending on your investment decisions. In the coin flip situation I showed you, you're betting too much and you follow the worst case, which is despite having a profitable situation, you're going to be losing money long term. The Kelly Criterion helps you determine the perfect bet size so that you can follow the green line. Now two other conditions that could happen is you don't bet as much as you can, in which case you'll still make money but follow the blue line, or if you bet roughly twice as much as the optimal bet, you'll break even. This is the magical Kelly formula. K, Kelly, is the percent of your bankroll you'll put at risk on each bet. P is the odds that you will win the bet. B is the payout on the bet. Now in the coin flip example I just used, the odds of a heads are 0 0.5. The payout, if you won, was 2 to 1. So if you plug in the whole equation, you have 1 minus a half over 2, and your optimal bet size would be only a fourth of your money. Now, I'm going to do four examples just to clarify this. All right, in the first example, since I like coins, let's consider a loaded coin. Your coin will land on heads 52% of the time you have the opportunity to bet even money, that is a dollar wins a dollar. What would be your optimal bet size? When your payout is at even money, Kelly Criterion is even simpler. It's simply your win percentage minus your lose percentage. In this example with the coin, 52% winners minus 48% losers, your optimal bet size is 4% of your capital. So in the coin flip example, if you bet 4% of your capital on each coin flip, you'll have the fastest growth and follow the green line. If you bet between 0 and 4, you'll grow slower. If you bet between 4 and 8, you go down also. Now in bets that are at even money, anytime you bet twice as much as your optimal bet size, you're now down to the break even dotted orange line. So if you were betting 8% of your money long term on this great opportunity, you're now expected to show no profit long term. And if you're betting more than 8% of flip, you're going to go broke. If you bet on a football game in Las Vegas, you're going to risk $110 to win $100, and you're probably going to win about half the time. How much money should you risk under those circumstances? Looking at our trusty Kelly formula, the odds of winning are 50%. The payout, or B, is about 0.91, which is close to 100 divided by 110. When you plug in the numbers, you get negative 0 0.05 which suggests your optimal bet size is negative 5%. Having a negative 5% edge tells you two things. First, you shouldn't be betting it. If you're betting anything at all above 0%, you're over betting and you'll ultimately run out of money. The second thing it tells you is that you want to be a bookie in this instance. And if you're a bookie, your edge is 5%. So if you have $20,000, you shouldn't take more than a $1,000 position on any game. In the third example, we're going to do an actual practical problem, which is somebody who's invested in a stock pension program. Let's assume the company you work for automatically invests a portion of every paycheck in your own company's stock plan. And let's assume the stock has a 10% return a year and that there's a 1 in 20 chance of you losing all your money 
if the company goes under. How much of your bankroll or your investment portfolio should you have invested in this one stock? Going back to our Kelly formula, we have a 95% chance of having a 10% return and a 5% chance of losing everything, the payoff being 10% or 0.1. So your optimal bet size is 45% of your investment portfolio. So if your company has you investing all your money in the, the one company and your optimal bet size is only 45%, they're actually gambling in a bad way with your money and you're likely to be on the red line. Everybody likes the lottery, so I'm gonna do a lottery example. Assume the Powerball jackpot will be at 300 million and there's, you have a one in 100 million chance to win. The Kelly formula will work for that also. So what does this crazy number tell you? It says your optimal bet size is a dollar if you have 67 million dollars. So unless you have at least 34 million dollars, risking one dollar in the lottery is too much and you're likely to lose it all if you keep doing that. That's all for today. If you have any other gambling questions, feel free to email me at justin at sportsbookreview.com.